everyone today I'm changing the shocks on my 69 dart um, I was kind of intimidated by it but it's actually super easy so I figured I'd show everyone just how easy it is just a reminder um, the driver's side lugs are reverse threaded so let's set a lefty, was it lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. Um, it's actually the opposite. I don't know if they thought they'd magically loosen up on their own. Back in the 60s, not sure when they switched it, but uh, last time I was at discount, they called me telling me I needed to take it to a place to w cut off the lug bolts and get new ones and blah, 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 until I reminded them that little fact. And uh, all the teenagers working there right away, of course, uh, magically could remove it just fine and uh, the tire was changed so just a reminder Here you can see I have it supported by the rear axle um, I jacked it up from the center and then I just put two jack stands on either side just so that it's safe of course make sure that your parking brake on, is on um, as well as it being in park and on a somewhat level uh, surface with uh, the front tires chucked as well just so there's no surprises so of course um, attached to the uh, I guess the lower part of the axle through these connectors. Uh, those are shackles or what you call that. But uh, the thing that holds the leaf springs and everything together, um, it's not super, it came off pretty easy for me, unlike the lugs and a lot of other rusted on fasteners on this vehicle. I put a, put a little bit of penetrant on there just to, to help me. But because they're rubber bushings, it's not like it's torqued on at all, really. Um, and the top one was a little harder to access. Um, and I'll show you better picture of that but it really came off pretty easy so I'm going to do that right now all right so but while this is a pretty easy procedure I did get this new cool eight dollar uh, cell phone grabby thing sorry for the cruise ship feel um, it's got a big bendy thing with a clamp so get my eight dollars worth on Amazon and now I can show you how to do things with both hands so sorry for the douchey shirt and if it is wobble it is a little windy out in San Diego so now you can see we actually using both hands so very easily and honestly I didn't pre loosen that it really is how easy it is it comes off nice and easy rusted or not um, know that there's always going to be a one uh, a um, it's going to always want to expand so just kind of be careful there's a metal curved washer on each side of it you can see how this is curved um, so it goes nut, curve in, um, the bushing that's built inside of the bottom of the shock absorber, the other curved one, again, both towards the bushing, and then it really comes off. Like I said, there's a little pressure, so the really hardest part of this whole thing, once you've wrestled with the lugs, is just popping this thing off. Um, whether you want to use just a hammer, I mean, it's broken. There is some pressure in the shock, um, unless it's totally busted, but a uh, little fight, and use the metal. Um, curved washer on the other side and it should pop off without too much too much grief there you go and you can see that other curved washer so again they, they go like this they kind of hug the bushing and then the nut secures it onto that bolt and then we'll do the top one I'll get a shot of that all right, so you can see the, the red one is actually a new one. Um, the blue one here is the old one. That's what we just disconnected. There's the, there's the what you call it. So once you actually move this away from the, you know, towards the, end, the center of the vehicle, um, it actually helps both loosen up that, that nut. That's not too much. Um, it's not too tight on there as well. It was actually looser than the bottom one on the other side at least. Um, so I'm going to undo that one uh, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so here's the old one. Of course, it's fully expanded. Here's the new one. It's tighter. Um, when we when you put it on the the top bolt, you want to call it that. Um, you can just one hand squish it or compress it. You can use two hands. I mean, there's no reason you can't. Um, you'll see when they come new, just to I'm sure save space that they kind of have this cheap wire deal holding it. And again, you get uh, work those biceps and. Once you compress it, it just falls right off. So I don't think you have to unwind it. Of course, it's going to get larger and larger as it sits there. These gases can compress 
the first time since it left its factory in Mexico. So make sure the dust jacket, obviously it's a dust jacket, um, the larger part's gonna put on top, put on top so that dust stays out of there. This obviously would trap the dust. And idiot proof mark, top of the arrow, uh, just in case your high quality shock doesn't have that. Um, yeah, it's like an umbrella, keeps the dust out. So I'm gonna install this now, and I'll see you on the other side. Um, worth noting, before you attach the bottom, um, don't tighten the, the top fastener all the way. It just gives you a little extra room to both swivel it and um, to move it around. Uh, now that I've finished the bottom here, um, it's time to tighten that up. Again, just to where the, the rubber starts to bulge. You don't want it on there tight. It really won't get tight, only because of the, the thick rubber bushing. So one thing I did notice on the other side, on the top, it just had a flat washer and the nut that held the uh, the shock onto the the bolt that was part of the I don't know if it was actually part of the frame or it was bolted on through there, but um, this one had the same as the bottom where it had the two curved washers and the nut um, on the top as well as the bottom. So whatever you have, deal with it. <laughs> Figure if it's from the 60s, it's probably been replaced once or twice or or more since then. When you're ready to compress the shock, you can see the bolts up here much too long and that's fine um, you can use one or two hands doesn't matter squish it and then the fun part is trying to hook it on there before of course I forgot my washer uh, well, I guess worth noting that there's two washers with different diameter holes so <laughs> I got even mic proof so push it up try to catch it as it expands to the mounting dealio and that's the hardest part of the whole install or swap and just like that give it some good torque you'll see the rubber start to compress and uh, you saved yourself a whole lot of money in labor I think I paid a uh, maybe 30 bucks for both of them and um, while I was at the register I said to text some some numbers, to, or some name to some numbers at AutoZone, and I got $7 off 30, so I paid probably 25 bucks after tax for, for both of them. Um, I did call around to some shops. It was, I mean, 100 something to even talk about it, so not that I would have. I just wanted to see how much it would cost, so again, once you see the bushings start to squish out, and the paint may crack just because, I mean, there's no reason to paint the rubber, but it would be more expensive for them to not paint it so now that that's in there good the top's good you just uh it's time to put the tires back on and have a nicer ride and thanks for watching